Hey ho everyone, I am Nathan Blake. Thank you so much for 500 subscribers. This is a place that I never expected to be, and I am just absolutely humbled and thankful for each and every one of you, those of you who, who have uh, subscribed to support me, those of you who watch regularly, those of you who share me and retweet my, my posts and things like that. Thank you so much. Um, I can't begin to say uh, how much it means to me that, that so many of you are, are not only interested in my work, but, but believe in, in what I'm doing here on the channel. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, this video is going to be uh, in celebration of 500 subscribers, me just telling you a little bit more about myself. So uh, first of all, I do have some questions. I uh, put a post on Twitter and asked people to send in their questions. And so this is probably going to be the, the main focus of this video because some of these are going to take a few minutes to really explain. So uh, first off, uh, the social omelet says, uh, congrats, my dude. Do you like omelets? If you do, how do you like them? If not, are you much of a breakfast guy? I really love omelets. Omelets are fantastic. Um, interestingly enough, I love breakfast so much that I rarely eat omelets, even though they're great, because given the opportunity to eat all of the breakfast foods, um, I usually go with something like pancakes or waffles or something because they are amazing. Um, not to say that I don't like omelets at all. Omelets are amazing. My favorite way to eat an omelet, um, given you know all the options in the world, is there's actually this cool way that I learned whenever I was much younger. <laughs> Um, where you take all of the ingredients you want for an omelet and you stick it into a uh, Ziploc bag and shake it all up. And then you actually stick that in boiling water for like, I want to say it was like 11 to 12 minutes or something like that. When you pull it out, it's like a really good omelet actually. Um, you know, not perfectly folded as an omelet is actually supposed to be. But definitely a pretty fantastic omelet. So that's definitely... <laughs> something that I've always uh, thought was pretty neat was uh, those sorts of omelets. Um, so I'm going to back this up just a wee bit. Just readjust there. There we go. Um, better shots now. Um, so yes, Social Omelet, that is what I had to say about that. Uh, Social Omelet did actually make a second reply actually saying, or, you know, what is your favorite game series of all time? Uh, Silver Lance 24 uh, also said that he would like to know that as well. Um, and since this is the slightly more serious question, uh, I'm going to go ahead and field it as well. Um, my favorite game or game series of all time is a very difficult and complicated question because... I'm not all about uh, choosing absolute favorites on most topics a lot of times, so I'm a very easygoing person, and I really like everyone and everything a lot, and so it definitely comes down to the whims of, of what I'm feeling right then in that moment, but I, I really thought about it a lot, and um, I'd, I'd have to come up with a full list, and you'll probably see this list at some point in the future here on the channel in a the top 10 sort of video. Um, but one of my very favorite games of all time is actually Earthbound for the SNES. Um, it is just such a delightful game, and it's so enjoyable, and it, it inspired so many people. It inspired the likes of Undertale and, uh, you know, all kinds of things like that, because uh, it was really one of the very first JRPGs that, or rather, its predecessor, the mother, um, but it was the first JRPG really in America to be released that was different than other JRPGs of the day. Instead of wizards and knights and sorcerers and, and goblins, you were a kid with psychic powers and a baseball bat fighting hippies. And that was just this ridiculous idea, and it was so colorful and wonderful. And uh, I played it whenever I was very young at my grandparents' house, and so it will always have a special part, a special place in my heart uh, that involves my grandparents and them, them uh, sharing it with me and, and showing me how to play it. And eventually... Uh, they lent me their copy of Earthbound, and I took it home, and it was one of the first games that I took seriously. It was one of the first games that I remember uh, starting up and playing through and getting stuck and then walking away from it like I generally did with video games whenever I got stuck, and then coming back to it maybe even a couple years later and starting it over from the first and then getting to that point and then just really just breaking through and continuing from that point and then beating the game in one solid run. And there are 
I, I'm, I'm not a completionist at all. I'm the type of gamer that will play a game until I'm not having fun because that's why I play them is to have fun and to interact with other people. I'll play a game until I'm not having fun and then I stop. And so there are actually a lot of games that I have a lot of experience with but maybe never beat um, because of that fact. So Earthbound is one of the few games that I remember trying to squeeze every bit out of it that I possibly could. I remember uh, looking in every single nook and cranny, and, and I remember grinding to level up and, and moving forward, and I thought that the not only the aesthetic, but the, the fact that you could name your own characters and name name your special moves and things like that was just the coolest thing. And I just, just something that I loved and something that, uh, frankly, you don't see anything even now that's that's similar to Earthbound in, in hardly any ways, except for Undertale. And again, you see that when a game tries to copy that sort of formula, uh, that, that art style, uh, they are extremely successful because they, they deconstruct the box. They don't just think outside of it, but they actually say, what makes the box tick and how can I make it different? And so it's, it's a really, really amazing thing. I, I've, I've dabbled a little bit in playing the original Mother and... Uh, I can't remember if I ever managed to play The Mother 3 or not, but uh, that's why I would say it's my, one of my favorite top favorite games rather than game series because I haven't had a ton of uh, experience with the others. And, and I did, like I said, I did dabble with The Mother for a short period of time, but it was it was definitely a lot more sloggy than Earthbound because by the time they hit Earthbound, they had refined it and they had figured out how to make every moment fun and made the grinding good and the combat. With, the way the combat was actually sprites that came and attacked you so you could avoid them or you could seek them out was really cool. And it was, it was also something that wasn't in any games, hardly any games at that point, and still is in very few games now. And it's something that I love when games do whenever they have turn-based uh, combat or, or encounter-based combat. So that's pretty much one of my very favorite games. If I had to go with a favorite series, I would probably say the Legend of Zelda series or perhaps the uh, Elder Scrolls series. Maybe uh, some slightly more obscure ones like uh, the Custom Robo series. The two that released in America were amazing. I would love to play more of those. So... Um, it's definitely something that I plan on doing at some point in the lifetime of my channel is releasing a top 10 of my top 10 favorite games and trying to order it. But between the time that I asked you to give me these questions and the time that I made this video it was really a number of hours. Um, not even a full day has passed, and there was no time for me to sit down with a pencil and paper and, and make this comprehensive list and then shuffle the the games around and say well this one feels like a three so i <laughs> just not gonna do that so um anyway so I, I hope the social omelet feels like i addressed his question well enough as well as uh, silver lance if you have any more uh n if you want more nuance out of it or anything just let me know and I'll, I'll be willing to talk about it again um monkey ninja games the mk or i mean mng uh, he asked, if I had the choice between tacos and salad, how many tacos would you eat? And to that, I have one important question, Monkey Ninja Games. What about taco salad? All right, so, um, Dova Ragnarok YT, uh, Ragnarok, uh, at Ragnarok 651 YT, uh, asked for, uh, he said, uh, congratulations, bro, just 500 subs from 1K, and my question is, what are your plans for the future, and which YouTuber would you collab with? So, my plans for the future, moving on, is for, by the summer, I plan on having a thousand subscribers. That's just where we're going. Um, I'm sure we can hit that mark by the summer, and so that's that's where I'm pushing right now. And I would love your help with that. If you'll share this video, if you'll share all any of my videos that you enjoy with other people, uh, I would really appreciate that. Um, so th those are my future plans. Future plans for the channel will also include more skits, um, continuing to improve my content and make it uh, more uh, in. Uh, more engaging and more user friendly, uh, continuing to try to innovate the channel. You'll notice that I've added new playlists, like a family friendly playlist for, uh, you know, people who are, are concerned about what their kids are watching. Uh, and I've added a, uh, 
all uploads playlist at the front of the channel because I had some people ask, well, where, why can't I always find your new videos? And they don't realize you can hit that video tab at the top and it'll pull up all my uploads. So I just made it easier for them and just put it right on the front of the channel as a playlist. So um, those, are, those are the future plans. You're gonna see me continuing to do my best to innovate, continuing to do my best to engage audience. Uh, continuing to try to grow my channel. You're going to see me doing more uh, li uh, live streams in the future. You're going to see me uh, doing skits and challenges. Um, this channel is going to keep growing and exploding and getting bigger as far as the number of people that are involved, but also as far as the kind of content you're going to see out of this channel. Will I will always strive for it to be entertaining and funny, and uh, video games will always be a major focus of this channel because it, that's a big part of where my heart is for this channel is with the gaming community and with games as an art form. But you're also going to see me branching out into other types of content and more things. So you'll, you'll continue to see the gaming content on the regular, but you're going to get to see new other types of content as well as I try to innovate and bring new people and new things into the channel. So that's where the future of the channel lies. As far as collabs go, um, it's that's a hard thing to really, uh, really say. I've got uh, lots of friends who uh, I'm collabing with off and on right now. Um, you'll get to see more of those videos in, in the coming weeks and months. Um, I've got some friends back home uh, near uh, where I was over the uh, holidays and with my dad's surgery who... Uh, want to collab some and do things with, with uh, their channel that I used to actually be on at one point. Um, and so that'll be really cool. You might get to see me uh, play with some old friends that, that in all honesty are, are uh, really just even better entertainers than I am. So uh, maybe I shouldn't put them on here because then they'll, they'll upstage me. <laughs> but uh, that aside, uh, if you are, if you're asking who my, you know, my fantasy collab would be with or something like that, uh, I would love to get to at some point make a video with uh, the likes of Markiplier and pe people like that. Maybe Peanut Butter Gamer, uh, something with uh, Game Theorist or something like that. There's, you know, a handful of those uh, YouTubers that have really inspired me and just made me love uh, this whole scene. All of the Let's Players, all of the uh, this community, they are the ones that that brought me to a point where I wanted to be a part of this community and wanted to do this. And so obviously they would be the ones that I would want to be uh, connected with uh, extra credits. Um, if I could do anything with them, that would be really cool. They're amazing guys, really intelligent. And I love hearing them talk about game design and things like that. So that would be awesome. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Dover Ragnarok. Um, my last question is from Josh Marbley at Josh Marbley. Uh, and he says, what inspired you to do YouTube and why? Well, what that comes down to, and that, the reason why I said that most of the video is probably going to be answering these questions, and I might have to do, do a, a separate video that's the about me, kind of my biography, uh, in the coming days. But this is a very, uh, this, this question is very involved. Um, it was a number of years ago, I had just moved out uh, on my own, and I was, uh, you know, working hard, making ends meet, and everything, and I was, I was living alone at the time, a bachelor out on his own for, uh, you know, I, I had uh, been away from my parents' house before, living with uh, other family members just to help them out with different things. Um, but really I'd always had my family support and everything. Not, not to say that I didn't have my family support when I moved out on my own, but I mean, you know, this was my first real step into being my own adult that was responsible for literally everything for, for myself, rent, everything. Uh, so I, I moved out, I was by myself. I didn't have very much furniture. You know, I was in a, an apartment with a couch and a, a, uh, a coffee table and, <laughs> and some internet and a TV. And that was... That was like kind of what I had at the time. My mattress laid on the floor. I didn't even have an actual bed. And uh, I'm an extrovert. Like like an extrovert like you wouldn't believe. Like I require human contact to such a degree that, it, that I have rarely met another person that gets more energized from being around people and less energized from being alone. And so there was this major aspect that I, I craved other people. I craved... 
uh, you know, interaction with other people. And uh, I, at the time, I was playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons with some friends. That was, those were some of my my main human interactions at the time. And one of them mentioned Markiplier playing Five Nights at Freddy's. And at this point, uh, this was when the first FNAF came out. At this point, I had not uh, seen hardly any Let's Players. I had very little experience with a Let's Player at that point in my life. And so I decided to, to go ahead and check it out because I was interested in FNAF itself. And so I started watching it and I saw what Markiplier had done and uh, his videos. And I found them very entertaining and enjoyable. And especially I enjoyed watching his videos as they came out, learning more about the lore of FNAF. And so as I did that, though, I got more interested in Markiplier and in, in what he did. And then I branched out from there and I started watching Peanut Butter Gamer. And then uh, from there, some friends pointed me towards the game theorists and their theories on Zelda. And so I was watching those. And before long, I was watching all of these different people and really enjoying them. And uh, it definitely uh, filled some of that need that I had for human interaction and as I continued to watch all of them and enjoy their content and stuff, and, and looking through all of their comments on their channels, especially on Markiplier's channel, but, but in general, I noticed a lot of comments from a lot of people who were crying out for help, who wanted people to talk to, who wanted people uh, to be there for them. And there was a lot of people who struggled with, with depression or different, uh, different issues and who found solace in... Uh, the videos that they were watching that they they found that that interaction that they needed but also they found humor and a way to get their mind off of the things that hurt them or 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 upset them and so upon seeing that i realized that that this wasn't just some goofy people just playing games on the internet these were people who were actually making a difference they were actually helping people and some of them weren't even necessarily always aware of the people they were helping and I realized that, that this was basically something that was necessary. That it was touching people's lives and helping people. And that got me extremely interested in, in the idea. And I've always been an entertainer. I've always been someone who has loved uh, making people laugh and uh, helping people uh, feel, feel happy. I, I had a number of friends who... Uh, struggled with depression in high school, and I, I, I always tried to be there for them. I even struggled with depression for a little while, and uh, I was able to, to, you know, grow out of that and move past it. And so it, it hit me as something that was, uh, it was very important to me that, um, it was very important to me that these people were doing these things, and they were able to help these people. And I suddenly, looking at it, realized that, that it was something that I was interested in doing as well. That because of my love of games as an art form, not just as a pastime, that I could see that games were important to people in a lot of ways, and that it was a good medium to uh, assemble people who were like-minded, who, who had similar interests and similar needs, and then you would be able to help those people. And so I, I came up with this idea, and I thought about it a lot, and I, I worked on different ideas for my channel, and, and I had different names thought out and things like that. And finally, uh, one night, I was watching uh, Markiplier, and I was going back into his backlog and finding vid old videos of his, and I found one called The Ripest of Fears, and it said, uh, please watch to the end. Very important message. And so I watched that video. When I watched that video, all the way to the end... At the end, Markiplier, having seen some of his old vlogs in the video and seeing some of his old fan art and, and people reacting to him and things like that, he actually broke down in tears and realized and, and said, said to himself and to his audience that he had lost his way and that he had made it more about the, the, the growing and the becoming famous than he had about being there for people and about helping people. And... That was whenever I really decided that Markiplier was a very genuine person, first of all. But, but second of all, it, it was a moment that inspired me to uh, start my own channel, uh, to really start my own channel, and to really uh, try to help people the same way that I had seen him help people through his charity live streams and through just being fun and enjoyable and being genuine with people. 
And so that's something that really inspired me and made me really want to do it more than ever, but I just didn't have the ability to do it at that time. And so I actually started working with a group of friends who already were starting out the channel, and I was, I was in a, a good number of their videos, you know, maybe even close to half. And we had a very small following. Uh, by the end of it, we finally had a, a, over 100 subscribers. It was a very long time that we were working on it as well. And uh, when it finally was all uh, ending and friends were moving in different directions, uh, uh, one of my very best friends, Ian, was headed off uh, to Virginia. And I looked down and I, I said, I need something that will still feel, fill this void of creating this content with my friends. And I thought, I think it's time for me to go ahead and start my own channel and to really start doing that. And so I was able to take what little bit I learned from working with my friends, from watching them edit the videos and things like that, and just started my own channel. I already had some of the equipment I needed. I collected little bits over time. I worked collecting bits of, of tech over years, actually, a couple years. And so I was able to do it on a very small budget, collect the pieces that I needed. And so when I, when I moved as well, I moved from my home in Oklahoma, uh, near where my parents lived, out to New Mexico. And when I moved out here, I uh, built a little studio into the corner of where I lived, and I got a webcam and I got my sound recording stuff and OBS set up and I bought a new graphics card for my computer because that was the last thing that I really needed in order to start and I started. And my very first video was uploaded at the beginning of September or the end of August, so about five months ago. Um, and it basically it was me playing a horror game and I made horrible mistakes and I was dumb and I, I feel like uh, I did really badly at that video and I'm so proud of it. I'm so happy that I did it. And I looked back at that video recently and I, I couldn't help but feel that that I had come so far and it was it was you people that allowed me to do that. It was people pushing me and telling me that, that I could do it and that, that my content was getting better and things like that, that that motivated me. And my family motivated me and my friends motivated me and you motivated me. And that's what's brought me here to 500 subscribers. And it's going to continue to be what brings me on through as I continue to grow this channel. So I guess hopefully that, ins <laughs> that answers Josh Marbley and his question of what inspired me to do YouTube and why. Um, well, I guess the why is still a little ambiguous, so I'll just hammer it down. I want to use the art of games and, and the relationships that we can build through our mutual love of the art of games to help as many people as I can, to reach as many people as I can and, and give them something entertaining to watch and to uh, be a part of, but also to create a community down in the comments that will help people who are in need, that, that will support people whenever they whenever they're hurting, that will, uh, you know, when someone is feeling depressed, they can let people know and people will support them. And I know that that's going to take a long time before we get big enough and there's enough people even commenting and, and stuff, but that's where I want this channel to be. That's where I want it to grow. I want to support the gaming community by being a part of the gaming community. But I also want to lead the people who are here at my channel in working in charity and helping people. Um, We've run multiple charity live streams on the channel, and uh, it was earlier on in the channel, and we didn't have uh, as much support at that time, and so it wasn't as successful as I hoped it would be. So I took a, a hiatus from uh, charity live streams to allow the people who had donated to, you know, feel comfortable donating again, because if you donate every couple weeks, then you really start running a lot of money. <laughs> um, but also to allow the audience to grow and become more comfortable with the idea so that, that they would be be willing and ready to help those less fortunate than them uh, whenever I start it up again. And I honestly think that now is, is about the time to start up again, so look forward to a charity live stream in February. And we'll talk about exactly what that looks like and what game I'll be playing later, but look forward to mid-February, uh, another charity live stream. So, um, But I also want to encourage you all to uh, work in charities yourselves and to uh, really uh, work with other people who need help and things like that. And, and this is something that I, 
I decided if I was going to ask you to do, then I needed to put my money where I'm where my mouth was, and and something that I was interested in doing anyway. But I, after running my charity live stream for uh, hurricane disaster relief, I went to Texas and worked in hurricane disaster relief personally, and uh, I it was a great experience, and I was able to to help people so that they could start rebuilding their lives, and I was able to support people, and it's something that I suggest everyone do. Um, because it's an amazing experience for you and for the people that you touch. So I hope that you all uh, find ways to give back to the community and help help people personally in your lives and, and in charity live streams and things like that. And if, if you don't give to my charity live streams and you give somebody else's or something like that, that's perfectly fine. If you don't have the money to give, then that's perfectly fine too. But I just want to encourage you to work with me to help people. And that's, those are the two big reasons I wanted to start this channel was to, to build a community that would help others and to build a place where those who are hurting can come and feel safe. So I guess that's about it. And that's actually quite a bit about me. Um, if you're wanting to know more about me and my personal life, then uh, let me know down in the comments below and I will do another video talking about my personal life. Uh, but for now, this video is already going super long, way longer than I expected it to. So, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for helping us get to 500 subscribers. And uh, I look forward to continuing to grow this community alongside you all. And I look forward to seeing what we can do in the future. So, thank you for being a part of this adventure with me. And for now, this is Nathan Blake signing off for Nathan Blake Games. Sayonara.